Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of Hibernate Made Easy, along with a few other Java books, including my Portlet programming book, a little SCJ certification guide, even a fun little book called What is WebSphere? But uh, I'm not interested in promoting my books right now. What I'd like to do is actually show you how you can write an application and basically set up an environment for doing JSF development. Now, if you want to develop a JSF application, one of the things you're going to need is you're going to need something from Sun. You basically need the JDK, the Java Development Toolkit. Now, there's a whole bunch out there, but if you head over to java.sun.com and look at the old popular downloads link, you'll find it somewhere. You'll find Java SE. You click on Java SE, you'll be taken to a place where you can download all sorts of stuff from the JRE to the JDK. We don't want the runtime environment. Um, actually, what we want is the JDK. And so if we click on download, we're given the opportunity to download the JDK. In this case, it's version 6, which I highly recommend. Update number 8. And of course, I'm going to be demonstrating how to actually do this on a Windows XP machine. Now, I've actually already downloaded the JDK. You can see it comes in at about 74 megs right there. It's a healthy little download. I'll install that in just a moment, but in order to start working with JSF, you're actually going to need a few things. You need the Java development environment, the Java development kit to actually help you compile some of your Java stuff, but you also need a servlet and JSP application server type of environment to actually run your JSF applications. And for me, I'm going to be very egalitarian and use Tomcat version 6. So I head over to tomcat.apache.org, click on the download link. I always click on documentation by mistake. You want the download link to download Tomcat 6. You'll see a whole bunch of different options over here, including the options to download the tar, or the zip, or the service installer. I'm just going to download the zip. That actually gives me the basic Tomcat implementation. I've actually already downloaded that. You can see it Tomcat 6.0.18 it's just less than 7 megs in size, so it's a real simple download. And then finally, one of the things you'll need to do is you'll need to mosey on over to javaserverfaces.dev.java.net. It's part of Sun's website as well. And you'll actually find the Mohera project. And this particular project provides an implementation of JSF. Notice that 2.0 is available. I'm going to focus on 1.2 for right now. If you actually click over here and you'll see the download section, you'll see the options to download a number of different items. But what I actually want is to really push in the early release of 2.0. It's fantastic. Um, but what I really want is I actually want the 1.2 implementation. You can see there's one there and the Mohera 1.2.10 binary zip file. That's the one that I'm going to take, and that provides an implementation of the JSF specification. Uh, it also provides documentation and some samples that are fabulous. What I'm really interested in, though, is a couple of lib files that will actually come from that folder. And you can actually see that it's called Mohera 1.2 FCS binaries, and it's about 8 and 3 quarter megs in size. So once I've got those downloaded, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to first install the JDK. The JDK takes a moment to come up. You need to accept the license agreement. And for the most part, I'm going to take the defaults except for where we install to. I hate installing under program files. I always like to change this and move it to actually a directory that starts with an underscore. I always do that. The developers on my team hate me when I do that. But important folders like to put an underscore on. That way, that way they'll actually sort of be right at the top of Windows Explorer when I look for it. And I'm going to name the folder underscore JDK 1.6. Um, I don't need the update version there. I'm going to click OK, accept all of the basic defaults here for pieces to install. Click Next again, and it will go on with the installation. I'm going to pause the video here as it installs. But there's an option that comes up. It asks me where I'm actually going to install the JRE. So the JDK is the development tools, the compiler, the, the sort of runtime tool, the JAR utilities. Uh, but there's actually a runtime environment, a JRE, that gets installed as well. It's going to ask to put that in program files. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to accept that default of putting the JRE under program files. So as you can see, the installation of the JDK also wants to install the JRE. That's fine. I'm going to let it go under program files and continue with the installation. 
and after a few moments you can see that the installation is finished. Now once I've got the JDK installed, I'll do a little update and refresh on my uh, file system there. You can actually see the JDK has indeed been installed. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my downloads and I'm going to install Apache Tomcat. Now this really isn't much of an installation, it's more of an unzip than anything. All I have to do is go into my WinZip utility, highlight all the files and say extract this and extract it right to the C drive. Now there's actually a path so that the files won't actually just get dumped right into the C drive. There will actually be a folder that's created named Apache something or other. But I'll do the extraction and after I've actually extracted this the contents of my Tomcat download I'm just going to go on to the file system and rename the folder that it gets that it gets extracted to. I'm just going to name that underscore Tomcat. As I said, I like to have little underscores in the name so that they're placed right at the top of Windows Explorer. So, going into my C drive, there's Apache Tomcat. I'm actually going to just quickly rename that folder to underscore Tomcat. And I'm actually going to do something that's not going to work. I am going to open up a command prompt. I just click start, run, and type cmd in there. And I'm going to use cd dot dot and cd underscore t star and cd bin to get into the bin directory of Tomcat. And you can see that in the bin directory of Tomcat there's something called startup.bat. Well that actually starts the Tomcat server. So I'm going to run that file and you notice the error, the error message that I get says Java Home or JRE Home has not been set. And indeed I have to set that. I need to issue a very quick little command that simply says set Java underscore home equal to, there's no spaces there, C colon slash underscore JDK 1.6 and of course that's where I installed the JDK. If you're following along make sure you have the underscore there it's very easy to forget. You can even echo that echo dollar sign Java home dollar sign sorry and it's not dollar signs it's echo percentage Java home percentage and there we go we actually see the home is set to C underscore JDK 1.6. So now if I just run startup.bat you'll actually get a little bit more success as we get some output from the Tomcat server indicating that indeed the Tomcat server is starting up. I will unblock the Java virtual machine, good old Windows firewall, and you'll notice that it gives me some information that the server was started up in 2901 milliseconds. And if I go to localhost colon 8080, we'll end up getting the Tomcat server running on my local machine.